The following is a special documentary presentation of News 4. Shays Buffalo sign once again towers over Main Street in Buffalo, New York. The Wonder Theater is restored to its old glory, lighting up the hearts and imaginations of new generations seeking to escape from the problems of the day. Buffalo's premier showman, Michael Shea, would be proud. But it takes good old-fashioned elbow grease and a lot of love to bring this palace back to life. It's in my blood now, <laughs> you know. This place has become part of me. Other great movie palaces may fall to the wrecker's ball, but Shays lives on, a palace for Buffalo and a treasure for the nation. Good evening. I'm Rich Newberg. The history of the Shays Buffalo Theater recalls the glory days of Buffalo, dating back to 1926 when Michael Shay opened this magnificent movie palace. But the story of the rebirth of the theater speaks of the spirit of a city whose people would not allow the final curtain to fall here. After all, the theater was built for them. It is the turn of the 20th century. Buffalo ranks high among great and wealthy cities of America, hosting the Pan American Exposition and featuring the new wonder of electricity. Thomas Edison's film of the exposition is a novelty. The motion picture camera, his invention, is only a decade old. The first silent motion pictures are projected in small, unadorned rooms called Nickelodeons because it only costs a nickel to get in. A young iron worker, nicknamed Iron Mike, who also works the rugged Buffalo docks unloading freight from the big ships, will be drawn to the motion picture and will rise to become a major force in the theater world, providing a means of entertainment that will make working people feel like royalty. But first, Michael Shea opens a saloon. He had singing waiters originally. It was a big uh, type thing that you get in England. You know, uh, where you get the singing waiters in the bars and, the, and this Lily Langtree and these different uh, entertainers came on from there. Then in 1882, after borrowing $2,500 from a Buffalo brewer, Michael Shea opens one of the nation's first music halls on Clinton Street, boasting the best talent ever presented to a Buffalo audience in a single hall. In 1914, he opens the Hippodrome on Main near Chippewa, it is the first motion picture house between New York and Chicago. By 1924, he owns 12 movie theaters and four vaudeville houses, but he dreams of something bigger. The most opulent movie palace that Buffalo has seen. Shea will team up with Paramount and build a colossal $2 million theater for the people of Buffalo. He always wanted the best for everyone in Buffalo. Of course, uh, I think he had a great love of the city. I know he did. This is the era of the movie palace. Even by 1920, millions of Americans are flocking to bigger and more ornate theaters, the so-called wonder theaters, featuring movie stars who are bigger than life. Chicago is graced with the magnificent work of theater architects Rapp and Rapp. They are hired to build a grand palace on Buffalo's Main Street. Michael Shea takes center shovel to break ground 
in 1925. In 1925, they did it in 11 months. I don't think we could do that today. He wanted this to be uh, a world of entertainment, a world of make-believe. It would appear that as all they had was one steam shovel and everything else was done manually. So it had to take hundreds of workers to make this happen. But who are these workers who are building a palace for Buffalo? Most remain nameless and faceless, but some are known. Carlo Bianchi and Giacomo Garofalo are Italian immigrants who work wonders with plaster that imitates marble. It's called scagliola. They create giant columns and sculptures, and their hearts are in their work. You come home late, all drift with paint, with plaster all over. He worked very, very hard. I, I, uh, I cried the first time I went because I said, I don't know how my father could do this kind of work. I couldn't believe this. I look at the ornamentation and I remember how proud he was to describe to me how they were made. And although I was only five years old at the time, I hung on every word he said. These men were not looking for personal glory. They gloried in the fact that all together the team was creating something enormously beautiful. Shays Buffalo, the Wonder Theater, opens with an acre of seats, an enchanted palace. Wait till you see what Michael Shea has built. The Roaring Twenties is a time for celebration, a time when Americans live to be entertained. The movies and their stars get bigger and bigger, and so do the movie palaces that draw millions to a world of fantasy. On January 16, 1926, the Shays Buffalo Wonder Theater opens with an acre of seats. It is billed as the mightiest site within four walls in all America. The mighty Wurlitzer, built in North Tonawanda, fills the theater with a powerful, lush sound as it magically rises before a dazzled audience. Well, the theater organ was really the voice of the silent film. If, for instance, there was a love scene, he had to come up with appropriate music for that. and vice versa, the, uh, be it a chase or a scene of, of, of tension. He had to come up with music that would, that would reflect what was happening on screen. And if he did it well, the, the, the person watching the movie was never really, their attention was never drawn to the organ. It was always what was on screen. At the Shays Buffalo, it is the job of projectionist Joe Hecht and his father John before him to make sure the movie is always on the screen. When you're working for Shea, you, you better uh, done a good job or else you're in real trouble. <laughs> Joe Hecht never loses a show, not even one newsreel. It is the newsreel that brings the world to the audiences at the Shea's, sometimes even featuring their own world at home. The city of Buffalo in western New York state Flies under 68 inches of snow after a four-day blizzard. I always thought they went over great. The people really enjoyed them. And we ran them here. We used to run them uh, before we could open up with a live event. Opening night on that January evening in 1926 delivers on the promise of presenting entertainment on a scale beyond belief.
A thunderous rendition of the 1812 Overture is played by the theater orchestra, rising from the pit. Later, a stage show and feature film. But for Dr. Charles Stein, only eight years old on opening night, it is the mighty Wurlitzer he remembers best. I remember the organ coming up out of the pit. I was baffled by the whole thing. And I can remember I said to my father, Dad, what, what is that thing coming up out of the orchestra, meaning the organ, you know? Mike Shea's dream of a wonder theater, featuring the finest in entertainment, is fulfilled. Hi! He brings the greatest stars of the time to Buffalo, often booking them himself. His contacts with them dating back to the vaudeville days at the turn of the century. His most outstanding characteristic was sincerity, and he was a he was a good man. He really was. I'm not a you know. This could be a lot more interesting interview if there was scandal connected with, but there is none in his life. Thank God that it's true. There isn't. And they continue to praise his theater long after he's gone. And let me tell you, it's wonderful to be back at Chase. And I mean that quite sincerely. I've been on a few stages in my career, and I can tell you that Chase does stand out in the crowd. The Chase Buffalo sign, neon in the mid 20th century, indeed stands out on a crowded Main Street. And those who make the theater their destination know they will be transformed the minute they enter. You felt like you were the richest guy in the world walking into a theater like that. Uniformed ushers with almost military discipline greet the audience. They are the pick of the crop, highly trained in service to the public. I want to thank you all for your time and your talents, and we look forward to seeing you for the new season. Girls, welcome to Shays. You look really enthusiastic tonight for a good night. Today's dedicated ushers hold on to the Shays' images from their youth. I loved it. It was just so, it was special. It was like a big palace or a castle. Different than the neighborhood theaters. For a few precious hours, it is possible to feel a part of a royal family. Walk down the staircase and pretend that you're a grand woman, a princess, or a queen. It was fun. It was fantasy. And I just thought it was gorgeous. Donata Ahern is a princess to Michael Shea. Donata is his granddaughter here in the baby carriage, and so many years later has now reconnected with the theater and the vision of her grandfather. I think it's wonderful that he fulfilled a dream that he had, and that in that, in that dream he was able to include so many other people. Hard times hit the Shays Buffalo Theater. What's to become of the great movie palace? Can it be saved? The Great Depression puts Americans in a survival mode. While the big theaters offer a much needed escape from reality, they become a luxury. But Michael Shea keeps his palace open. And he refused to close down even though he was losing money because he said too many people would be out of work if he did that. World War II brings people back for the newsreels and at Shea's Buffalo, a lot more. I remember when I was a little girl. I remember this theater during the war when uh, the big bands would come and I'd skip high school. <laughs> take off my collars and cuffs from my uniform because the nuns didn't really want us to do that. And we would come in a group to see Glenn Miller and all the marvelous bands. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But in the 1950s, many of the great palaces fall victim to the Wreckers Ball as city dwellers move to the suburbs and Americans become fascinated with the little screen that brings entertainment right into their living rooms. Auctions are held, selling off the movie palace treasures and adding to the downfall, new antitrust laws prevent the movie studios from owning their own movie houses. Shays changes hands from Paramount to Lowe's. Decay eats away at the theater, but in 1964, 
Buffalo developer Leon Seidel buys the Shays and brings back live entertainment to its stage, hoping to bring people back to downtown. I believe that he kept this theater standing and I believe he made it turn the corner from being a movie house. But Seidel loses Shays to the city for back taxes owed. Lowe's wants to strip the theater of its treasures and the city can't find the funds to restore it. The volunteer who would become the president of Shays remembers how bad things had gotten in the early 70s. I found some, uh, some maintenance people who decided to, to see how hard they could hit chandeliers with a football. So I took away their football, and they were pretty angry with me that I took away their football, and I told them that uh, as a citizen, this building belonged to me, and it belonged to them as well, and they shouldn't be desecrating it. Kurt Mangel, a Lowe's building engineer, makes his home in the theater, moving in and taking inventory of everything inside while protecting the palace against vandals. We were broken into quite a few times where I heard the noises and called the police, and we stopped these kinds of things from happening. Kurt, can you step over this way? Probably more than any other one person. Responsible for what we have today. Mangel starts a volunteer group called the Friends of the Buffalo Theater that legally stops Lowe's from removing precious items. The Friends eventually receive the support of city controller George O'Connell. Shays becomes listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Oh, we had a lot of respect for him. We, you know, we knew he was uh, trying to uh, upgrade the place, and you know, he's going to keep the place going. But there is much work to be done. The mighty Wurlitzer's huge wooden pipes and accessories are heavily damaged by water leaks. Maureen Wilkie, truly one of the friends of the theater, is also an expert on theater organ restoration. She goes to work. There were places in the chambers that were so damp and dirty that mushrooms were growing. Um, the wooden pipes fell apart. She gives it the same kind of attention that the dedicated workers at Wurlitzer in North Tonawanda gave this incredible instrument when it was created. It is an organ that actually uses real percussion instruments located behind a balcony wall instruments ingeniously activated by a system of air-powered hammers. With things looking up, George Burns returns to Shays for its 50th anniversary. He is glad to be back and adds credibility to the drive to bring the theater back. I used to play it all the time with Gracie. We used to play Buffalo and Toronto. Those were two big weeks in Boardville. And the last time I played Shays Buffalo was in 1932. 30 years after the Friends of the Buffalo Theater refused to allow the final curtain to fall, Shays is on its way to being fully restored. With great care, work begins on a new pediment or peak for the theater. Great pains are taken to make sure the durable glass fiber reinforced concrete material exactly matches the old terracotta piece that came down in the 1930s. A smiling face in the middle gives the pediment human expression. It's kind of symbolizing downtown Buffalo. Smiling face finally gonna come back to its place and hopefully stay there for hundreds of years. Then comes the finishing touch, a replica of the original 65-foot Shays Buffalo sign is hoisted into place, complete with 1,100 lights. I'm gonna ask you all to help me count this down. Okay. And in a scene perhaps reminiscent of opening night in 1926, Main Street in Buffalo is crowded with spectators who are filled with anticipation. The great sign is lit up to signal a new era for the grand old palace and perhaps for the city. It will stand as a beacon welcoming everyone to a thriving theater district. That means uh, quite a bit. Uh, in fact, if I remember correctly, my wife and I had our first date here at Chase. That's what, over 50 years ago. And the moment means quite a lot to the friends of the theater who fought so hard for its survival. It's a little bit overwhelming. I got misty-eyed. 
because it was something I had always hoped to see, and it came true. You go back and you say, yeah, sometimes there was a lot of pain, a lot of tears, but at a moment like this, you realize that every moment was worth it because future generations will have something that's magical, and our kids and the kids after them will look back and say, thank God somebody cared. Shays Buffalo Theater sets a record in season ticket sales as first-run Broadway shows again bring America's brightest stars to the Queen City. The new millennium brings a record number of season ticket holders to Shays. They are drawn to the Great Palace because now Broadway has come to Buffalo. In 1999, the Phantom of the Opera becomes the first Broadway blockbuster as Shays reinvents itself. The show's star is excited to become a part of Buffalo history. This is exciting because the city wants to see its own jewel box come to life. The jewel box becomes more valuable through a $16 million expansion of the stage, including a brand new stage house behind it, with modern dressing rooms and plenty of new space necessary to accommodate the mega hits of Broadway. The stage house really is the, the most dramatic change uh, since Shays was built. And now, volunteers rise to the immense challenge of restoring the inside of the palace, section by section working side by side with the experts. I love it, it's a part of me. I've been here seven years uh, working under excellent uh, tutorage, Doris Collins, the rest of the volunteers, we love what we're doing. Uh, we're seeing a place that was almost wrecked, was an inch from a wrecking ball. It is this kind of dedication that successfully brings the big ornate chandeliers back to life through crystal cleaning and replacement of missing pieces a rendering of Louis Tiffany's magnificent original design work for the interior of the theater shows the grand nature of his vision. Oh, it has a life of its own. Sure, I think it's going to supersede us all. <laughs> and so the great movie palace, built on the dream of a great showman, is destined to work its magic on generations to come and for all who yearn to leave their troubles behind and enter a world of fantasy. A world created in a carefree era where glittering stars shined on a silver screen and graced the stage in the palace built for Buffalo. It is not by chance that this grand palace survived hard times. It has always had friends who were there to protect it, no matter what the cost or personal sacrifice. They knew that by holding on to Shays, they would keep the doors to dreams and fantasies open so that we would all have a place where we could leave our troubles behind and enter a world where just about anything is possible. I'm Rich Newberg. Good night. It's in my blood now, <laughs> you know. This place has become a part of me. So happy to be here. My father would be so proud to see this. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. Because you know why? Without this place, he might as well roll a bowling ball right down Main Street.